Thank you for being with us tonight. This meeting has been brought to you in part by... Let Grand Forks International Airport help you start your next vacation off on the right foot. Grand Forks International Airport offers flights to the sunny destinations of Orlando, Las Vegas, and Phoenix on Allegiant, and connections anywhere in the world through Minneapolis-St. Paul on Delta. Forget the hassle of long drives, parking nightmares, and stressful check-ins. The convenience of flying locally means less headaches and more time for you. Grand Forks International Airport. Your airport. Simply grand. Know what's in this box? Well, in case your crystal ball is broken, here's a hint. Safe, reliable energy, for starters, but there's also a commitment to this community. See, at Excel Energy, this is our hometown. So we're not just about making a living here, we're about living here. Oh, I wish I had wings. In our community, we're always delivering. Excel Energy, responsible by nature. Grand Forks. On Saturday, August 17th, feel the thrill of WWE Live with the Universal Champion. The age of Rollins is here! And we are going to burn it down! See Seth Rollins collide with Baron Corbin for the Universal Championship, plus Braun Strowman battles Bobby Lashley one-on-one. -on -one. It's WWE Live at Grand Forks on Saturday, August 17th. Tickets are available.
under item one, roll call, and welcome. Weigel? Here. Dockler? Here. Weber? Mock? Here. Marshall? Here. Here. Sandy? Veen? We have a quorum. Thank you. And Mr. Weber, are you on the phone? I'm here. I think I heard him. So, uh -oh. so I believe there are a few more people here than normal and probably um, to speak to an item. So if you are here to speak to an item other than 213, hey, please let Mr. Hill know so we can make sure we don't miss you on that item. If you are here for item 213, if you would fill out a speaker card, they're in the back. And then when you come up to the microphone, if you'll introduce your name and address and drop the speaker card in the tray, um, that would be helpful so they can enter everything into the meeting minutes. Moving on to discussion items. Item 2.1, resolution authorizing the issuance of revenue bonds on behalf of All True Health Systems. Ms. Starr said. Thank you. Councilmember Mock, uh, members of the committee, the item you have before you is a resolution authorizing the issuance of revenue bonds on behalf of All True Health Systems. Uh, as the staff report summarizes, uh, state statute allows the city to issue revenue bonds for All True, and we have done this in the past. This bond will be issued to refinance existing bonds um, as they're looking at interest savings, any uh, if there are any costs involved in uh, from the city's uh, part that would be reimbursed by Altru, and we would take no liability on as the city for this debt. Um, we are asking uh, of you tonight to recommend to the full council approval of the attached resolution authorizing the issuance of these bonds. If you have any questions, um, I can answer those. Or Sarah is here also representing Altru. Thank you. Um, council discussion? Move approval. We have second. A motion. motion and a second. Um, all in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next series of items uh, will be Mr. Swanson. Um, and I think we can take items 2.2 .2 through 2.11 um, all together. Item 2.2, Ordinance Amending Section 8-0825, relating to impounding of certain vehicles, removal and storage fees. Item 2.3, Ordinance Amending Section 9-0127, relating to trespassing on private property. 2.4, Ordinance Amending Section 8-0311, relating to failure to report an accident. 2.5, Ordinance Amending Section 9-0503, relating to penalties for specific offenses. 2.6, Ordinance Amending Section 8-0516, relating to passing and overtaking of vehicles. Item 2.7, Ordinance Amending Section 21-0205, relating to class descriptions and requirements. 2.8, Ordinance Amending Section 8 Dash 1503 relating to penalties for specific offenses. 2.9, Ordinance Amending Section 9-0220 relating to possession of marijuana. 2.10, Ordinance Amending Section 9-0108 relating to possession or ingestion of marijuana. And item 211, Ordinance Amending Section 8-0202 relating to driving under the influence of controlled substances. Mr. Swanson. Thank you. Madam Chair and members of the committee, it isn't very often I get to monopolize the agenda, so I thought I'd take full advantage of it at tonight's meeting. So after about two hours of discussion, I should be done with my items. Not really. Most of the ordinances in front of you are uh, ordinances addressing changes in state legislation through the last session, although there are a couple that are not. Uh, I also have had the opportunity to uh, address these matters with the city prosecutor and there are a couple of minor changes in the ordinances that you have but very quickly the first one dealing with impounding of certain vehicles that is a request from the police department to add parking in alleys and so forth uh, where vehicles are parked and are blocking traffic that is a change it is not related to legislation 
The ordinance on trespassing on private property is not related to current legislation. It is a change requested by the police department. State law currently allows an exemption for law enforcement officers in the official capacity to not be governed by a private trespass ordinance. We are incorporating that provision of state law in our code. Uh, that had not been incorporated previously. The ordinance relating to failure to report accidents, currently state law and our city code says if you have an accident with damage of $1,000 or more, you must report it. State law has changed that $1,000 limit to $4,000. We are making uh, that change. And there is uh, one correction in the ordinance that was passed out in the packet where I had omitted changing $1,000 to $4,000. So the new ordinance will change that as well. Uh, the ordinance 90503 relating to penalties for specified offenses, we are adding specific provisions in there for alcohol evaluation uh, in accordance with new state legislation. We are changing the penalties to be in accord with uh, new legislation. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is no other need uh, for that amendment. Uh, and I'll address it also later. There's another ordinance that it deals with fees. But generally speaking, there was some change in the legislation this last year that allows cities to increase their fees for certain offenses. These ordinances include the higher fee level. I just went ahead and incorporated that authority to increase the fees as allowed by the legislature. The ordinance 80516 relating to passing and overtaking vehicles is technically a, a correction type ordinance. We had the wrong word. We had overtaken instead of overtaking. We corrected that. The ordinance on 210205 deals with winery on and off sale licenses. The word sell was omitted. Uh, again, we're making that technical correction in that ordinance. Section 81503, penalties for specified offenses. This one has penalties for a large number of offenses that are changing. They incorporate both state law changes as well as our authority to increase the fines. There is a question, a policy question there. The way this is written reflects what was previously written and goes to the higher fee. If you don't want to go to that higher fee as a mandatory fee, we could provide up to that, excuse me, up to that fee as opposed to a specified. Uh, I have drafted it so it's a specified fine as opposed to up to that fine. The last, uh, or excuse me, the next two ordinances, 90220 and 90108, relate to marijuana. We have incorporated the exemptions that if you are in possession of medical marijuana or marijuana that's provided for under state law and the medical marijuana provisions. So those are the changes in those two ordinances. And the last one, driving under influence. Uh, there have been a number of changes over the last three or four years from US Supreme Court decision. There's also been changes in legislation. There was a fairly significant bill this year that incorporated all of those law changes under DUIs. We have now incorporated the changes for uh, DUIs that match our code with state law. With those very brief explanations, I stand for any questions you may have on, on any of them. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, if there are no questions, my recommendation is that the committee pass a motion to introduce and give plenary approval to each of these ordinances. Any discussion from council? Um, I would make a motion for preliminary approval of all of the ordinances as proposed. Is there a second? Thank you. Um, any other council discussion? Hearing none. Um, so, uh, we're still working through the first part of the agenda. Yes. Oh, um, yes. Either item 29 or 210. Um, the ordinance relating to possession of marijuana is 2.9. Um, Are we discussing that presently? Yep, we're taking all of them together. So okay. if you had anything on 2.9 or um, 210 is relating possession or yes, ingestion. I had a little bit for both 2.9 and 210. Would you give us your name and address just for the record? Uh, my name is David Owen. I live at 750 South 43rd Street, apartment number 1021A. It's uh, also called The Verge um, Apartments. It's in Grand Forks. So here's my commentary. 
As we can see over the past couple of elections, we see a clear move towards legalization, and we see that the city of Grand Forks specifically voted in favor of legalization by a simple, by a fair majority. Um, as a result, we have also seen movement in the legislature to push for partial decriminalization. It's clear that by both the will of the uh, city of Grand Forks and by the will of our representatives at the state legislature, they were pushing for a decriminalization bill, which was not quite achieved. What that means is it puts the city in a little bit of an awkward position. So what can we do to kind of represent the city and deal with the will of our people in the city while also respecting state law? I would like to suggest that we adopt an ordinance as well in addition to this that moves enforcement of marijuana ingestion and marijuana possession to the lowest possible priority for law enforcement, both given the precedent of the fact that this city voted in favor of full legalization and given the precedent that our representatives, including Republicans and Democrats from 42 and the surrounding districts which encompass the city of Grand Forks, voted for a complete decriminalization bill. It, it's in my opinion that's in the best interest of the city, therefore, to follow the will of the people as much as possible in accordance with the law. And while we cannot directly defy the state law, this is the best way to protect our citizens and represent what they voted for. So that's an, a recommendation that I would suggest. I would also like us to look at what ingestion really means and how it's problematic in regards to enforcement. So ingestion itself is simply the consumption of marijuana. So there needs to be some form of carve out for people who live in a household with medical marijuana for a very simple reason. When they typically determine ingestion, they do it through a percentage-based THC test. Usually these are good in the hair for 30 days. In blood, they're good for, call it two to four days. Now let's pretend you're visiting your grandfather who has a medical marijuana card. And you happen to be in the same room in him, as him when he smokes marijuana. It's possible, however unlikely, that you will have some form of THC in your system, and therefore you could be popped for an you could be arrested for an ingestion charge, and the test would show positive. As a result, I think there should be an affirmative defense portion, which allows for argument that if you're in frequent and close proximity to an individual who is using medical marijuana, that that be an acceptable defense at the city level. That's basically what I wanted to cover in regards to the marijuana ordinances. I think overall we've got a step in the right direction. But there's one last thing that we could look at, and this specifically pertains to the medical law, and that is it is currently legal to discriminate against someone who is seeking alternative care through medical marijuana by means of employment. What does that mean? That means that even if you have a legitimate medical card in the city of Grand Forks, you can be terminated for using medicine designed to treat a very potentially lethal or serious condition. So I think that it would be pertinent that city council look into some form of protection for legitimate medical patients who are trying to continue to have employment so that they can have their health insurance to treat their condition while also using the medicine that they believe is best for them during that period. That's basically all I wanted to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Mr. Swanson, I... Well, without debating the merits of his comments, which I will not, I can simply tell you, you do not have the authority to do any of those changes without state legislation leading the way, even as a home rule city your ordinances must be consistent with state law. So in terms of many of those suggestions, we would not have the authority to do Correct. that. And, and the fact that the local legislators may have voted in favor with the majority of the legislators did not adopt some of the, the changes that the gentleman spoke of. And as a city, you do not have the authority to implement those. Um, I don't believe employment is within city um, jurisdiction to make not with those respect types of to changes. that. Okay. The whole issue behind marijuana is still a, a minefield. It is still a controlled substance under federal law. It is still a controlled substance under state law. While the legislature made some steps or inroads into decriminalizing and changing the penalties for certain marijuana related offenses, and we have further allowed medical marijuana, those fields are all what's called occupied by the state, meaning that the city, even if you had specific home rule authority to change it, have been preempted by the adoption of the state legislation. So to accommodate or to accomplish the goals that this gentleman spoke of, it really would require state legislation. If you'll come up, well, we can do a 
So Great my question, one yeah. question is, I, I understand that some of the things I suggested may not be possible, and you have better expertise than I do. The question is, is City Council allowed to set law enforcement priorities such that marijuana would be the least prioritized offense enforceable under police law? I know cities such as Denver have done that. Not, not in violation of state law. If the state law would grant the authority for the city to establish a priority of enforcement, then the city could. Okay. But by ordinance, the City Council could not do that. Okay, thank you. And just so we're clear, other states will have different laws as to what localities can or cannot do. North Dakota in this area has not found fit to give local authorities discretion to make rules other than what the state has adopted. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? Um, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, item 212, noisy party ordinance discussion. Um, this was tabled from June 10th, 2019, Committee of the Whole. Um, Mr. Weibel, did you have an update? I would just ask that we table again until a later time. Thank you. Um, is there a second? Thank you. Um, motions to table can't allow for discussion. So. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Item 213, resolution of the Grand Forks City Council annually recognizing the second Monday of October as Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, Mr. Phelan, did you want to introduce for sure. staff? Uh, I can introduce this. Uh, uh, I met along with uh, a few others from city staff, met with Council Member Mock, or Col Council Member Dockler, sorry, Council Member Mock and uh, with council member Dockler and a group of uh, citizens, concerned citizens regarding this uh, particular uh, resolution. We had a really good conversation about a week ago today. And uh, that's why this is in front of you today. There's a group that's, that's led that. We did have a good conversation um, in the meeting. Um, I've heard lots of positive feedback, much like we've seen with uh, the Native American uh, fl flags that we have in, in uh, front of our council dais. Um, regarding this initiative. The only feedback that I have received is there are references in the resolution uh, regarding Christopher Columbus. And uh, can we can we move forward the resolution uh, without reference that? And Council Member Dockler and I in the group talked about that, but I think uh, they thought, thought that it's really important to have the full dialogue regarding this issue is that we need to, to speak about um, why this is in front of us and, and things that um, have happened in history. So that's why it, it, it's contained what it is. We did discuss uh, many of these different aspects and obviously with the interest in the, in the group here in, in our council chambers, um, that's kind of the spirit of what it is. And I think council member uh, Dockler wanted a full and engaged conversation. And uh, I think generally it's been a positive review and I'm just highlighting some of the things that have, have come to me about why it reads the way that it reads. So with that, I'd, I'd hand it over to our, our council member Dockler. Um, I would like to start uh, to begin today by acknowledging that we are meeting on the traditional and ancestral land that has been inhabited by the Mandan, Hadatsa, Arikara, Yanktonia, Sisseton, Wapitan, Hongpapa, Dakota, Lakota, Pembina, Chippewa, Anishabe, Cree, and Mati. We're grateful for the opportunity to meet here and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this ancestral land and recognize and deeply appreciate their historic connection to this place. So Mr. Feland already introduced our resolution for Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I have the pleasure of bringing it up again to you. Uh, the idea of replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day uh, was born in 1977 at a UN-sponsored conference in Geneva, Switzerland on discrimination against Indigenous populations in the Americas. Indigenous Peoples Day is a holiday celebrated in many U.S. cities to honor and acknowledge the past and continuous presence of Native people in the Americas. At least 122 cities and municipalities, three counties, two school districts, nine colleges and universities, and seven states have also chosen to proclaim this day to date. This conversation that we're having today isn't to rewrite history, but rather it's to write it by acknowledging the truth of Christopher Columbus's legacy and how Columbus Day came to be. I think it's important to have historical context. Um, it is a little bit dry for some of you that are maybe not history buffs, 
but I do think it's important to be on the same page of what we're talking about in order to move this conversation forward. <coughs> so if you'll bear with me. Columbus Day came to be um, because an estimated 4 million Italians immigrated to the United States from 1880 to 1920. Many of them were farmers and laborers fleeing from poverty. In America, they encountered religious discrimination, difficult working conditions, and a culture of anti-Italianism that viewed them as inferior and associated them with organized crime. In 1891, 11 Italians were lynched in New Orleans by a mob that held them responsible for the death of a police official. At the end of the 1800s, Italians began to link themselves more with Columbus. Italian-American businessman and newspaper owner Generoso Pope was among those who worked to get Columbus Day recognized as a federal holiday in 1937. It was one of the things that would allow them to become Americans symbolically, to have an official American holiday and to emphasize the idea that Columbus was a great discoverer who helped find the America that we know today. It is ironic then that Christopher Columbus did not discover the Americas, nor was he even the first European to visit the New World. In fact, Viking explorers had sailed to Greenland and Newfoundland in the 11th century prior to Columbus. Christopher Columbus paved the way for European colonization by opening trade routes from the Americas to Europe. It is those trade routes, however, that exploited our indigenous populations by enslaving them, as well as providing a pathway for African slavery to take root in America's history in addition to other crimes against humanity. So while we may have been taught Columbus was a daring and path-breaking explorer who transformed the new world, it is even more important to understand all of Columbus's transforming impacts, which unleashed changes that would eventually devastate the native populations he and his fellow explorers encountered. This resolution was crafted and is brought forth in collaboration with our indigenous community, some of whom are in this room tonight, and I thank you for coming. This resolution is not simply change for change's sake, but rather a significant step in building a stronger relationship with our indigenous community. Conversations which call into light the negative actions of historical heroes will never be easy, and it's not comfortable. But it is necessary to continue self-reflection as a community and as a society when the facts are present so that we can continually be better. Affirming the Indigenous Peoples Day Resolution as a city in accordance with the Welcoming Community Roadmap Initiative and the Diversity and Inclusion Resolution continues to affirm Grand Forks' commitment to being a welcoming, vibrant, destination city, and it is an actionable step that truly would make North Dakota legendary. And so I would like to invite anyone uh, who has filled out their comment cards and would like to share or make their remarks to come up to the mic. If people will, um, just come forward and leave your comment card behind so we have it for the minutes when we go to print those up. Um, and if you will, just introduce yourself as you speak. Hello, my name is Courtney davis Suvanasak, and I am a resident of Grand Forks, North Dakota, and I am an enrolled member of Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. If you will bear with me, I do have a written statement um, from the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa chairman, um, Jamie Azure, and I would like to read that to you in the crowd, if, if okay. Grand Forks City Council. Bonjour. Ogamai. Ogama. Gasa Kanu Mina Gijigan Nogam. Hello, my name is Spirit Hello, my spirit name is Spotted Eagle Jamie Azure. Today is a good day. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to read this letter. I completely understand the importance of elect of time with elected officials. I'd also like to thank and commend you all for accepting public comments and taking the initiative of bringing to light an issue across Native nations, including the five tribes of North Dakota. We all know the saying, the old saying, the winners wrote the history books. Unfortunately, that has been the case with the history of this nation's first people. The hard truth is that the landing of Columbus on this continent started the events that almost destroyed a people and a culture. While I understand the significance of why Columbus Day was established, I also need to point out that the Native Nation's true history was scrubbed clean from history books for 100 years. Now in the year 2019, 
information is a click away in this digital age of data. I highly recommend searching a quick documentary called The Canary Effect to get a glimpse of the atrocities a proud people endured only to survive and flourish to this very day. Tribes in the state of North Dakota have made many great strides of partnership and respect these last two to three years and the momentum keeps rolling forward. This act of officially changing Columbus Day into Ch Indigenous Peoples Day is not only a symbolic, a major symbolic decision that coincides with our trending partnerships of respect, but a true statement that a people's fight from the decimation is to be honored. As a Ogama, a chief chairman of the great Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Nation, I implore you to recognize October 14th as Indigenous Peoples Day. I speak on behalf of our 34,000 members along with a large segment attending UND and in living in and around the Grand Forks Metro. I have faith that the esteemed City Council will make the correct choice. And again, I thank you for your time and willingness to bring this to light. Ogima Kitagasi Kinu. I think I got it right that, <laughs> that second time. Uh, Jamie Azure. And this is my own personal statement, um, so bear with me. Um, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And on the second Monday in October, we observe a federal holiday dedicated to a man who was said to have discovered the Americas. What we intrinsically know is that the Americas were already inhabited by hundreds of millions of people. His quest to find fame and fortune was one major catalyst to create generations of trauma through the genocidal acts committed to the indigenous communities of the Americas. Bonjour, I mean, good evening, City Council. I thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. My name is Courtney Davis Sivanasak, and I'm an enrolled member of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. One of the greatest moments of my life occurred on the second Sunday of October, when my eldest son, Benjamin, was born in Quentin Burdick Memorial Indian Health Service Facility in Belcourt, North Dakota. Benjamin and I fought for our lives that evening. I had an adverse reaction to the hospital's medication, which caused my blood pressure to drop dangerously low. When I made my final push, my son came into this world eerily quiet, and his skin was purple. His cord had wrapped around his neck, and he gasped after each tiny breath he took. He was airlifted to Trinity Hospital in Minot and stayed three days in NICU and later discharged alive and well. Why is my personal anecdote? <laughs> relevant to this larger task at hand. For us to celebrate Columbus Day, a man who enslaved and eradicated millions of indigenous people, my personal story of the birth of my son is symbolic. Right now, as I stand here, please, before you, please consider my son Benjamin's story. He will start middle school this year. His story is one of many. We are a representation and the true embodiment of generations of resilience. We have persisted and continue to thrive. For many, our survival, our advocacy, and this resolution represent a move, a step forward to rectify the wrongdoings of colonizers of the past. We cannot change history's mistakes and misfortune. This is not an attempt to weaken the history most of us were taught in grade school. This is an opportunity to strengthen histories and accurately portray all perspectives to include narratives of the indigenous people who are here and are still here, who were here, here and are still here. I, already, I know that our future in Grand Forks is bright and welcoming because we've taken some steps together, together already. As the North Dakota tribal flags of the Sisseton, Wapiton, Spirit Lake, Standing Rock, three affiliated MHA Nation, and Turtle Mountain Nations sit behind you.
together side by side. We have many steps in front of us. I stand here humbly tonight as an Indigenous community member, a graduate student, and most importantly, a mother of three beautiful, intelligent, and receptive multiracial children who are extremely proud of their Anishinaabe and Lao heritage. What history will we write tonight? Grand, Six, uh, Grand Fork City Council members, we are asking this resolution passed as is. Your vote will help us honor the truth. Let's do the right thing in a unanimous vote next Monday, July 15th. Thank you. Do I, yeah, questions or let people come up first, you said? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Hello, Grand Fork City Council. My name is Niska Kempenek. I'm going into sixth grade at South Middle School. I was born and raised in Grand Forks. I am a member of Turtle Mountain Bound Band of Chippewa. I'm asking you today to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. I was inspired by my older sister, Zoelle, to advocate for my education. In first grade, I shared with my teachers how celebrating Columbus Day affects me. I gave them information on facts and they honored my request. This has been helpful to not only myself, but my fellow classmates. Therefore, I think we should replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you for listening. Bonjour, uh, Grand Forks City Council. I am Hilary Kempenick. I am a resident here in Grand Forks. I live at 1610 Ryder Road. Um, I have been a resident here for half of my life where I received my education, um, met my husband, and um, we are raising our children here now. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Councilperson Katie for your acknowledgement. That was very beautiful, and I hope to see that become um, a thing here at City Council and throughout our community. Um, what I'm going to say is ad lib. Um, as many of you have heard from me through email and social media, um, I respectfully uh, request that you pass this forward as, it, as the amendment or proposal is. Um, first of all, I think it's really important to note that we're not asking for a, um, a formal apology or anything, as I have seen. Um, stated online and actually un, um, had heard on the radio today, we're just simply asking for you to correct the mistruths that are, have been bestowed upon us throughout our educational system and throughout our communities. Um, I believe uh, uh, Councilperson Katie Dackler had really gave a pretty thorough statement regarding um, the misfortunes, I suppose, of Christopher Columbus. Um, he is seen throughout the world as a mass murderer. He is a pedophile. He had committed um, many crimes against humanity, including human trafficking. And um, these are things I believe that our community do not want to support and say that we, we allow this, especially in a time where we are seeing a rise in this. Um, so I think something acknowledging this uh, is, is a way to move forward and for us to really unite. Um, I, I'd also like to note that unfortunately due to the misunderstandings um, and what we have been raised to believe uh, um, have really hurt our communities uh, as a whole and again uh, for the indigenous people. As an, an indigenous, indigenous person, I am often glossed over and I can, I can say that for most of our indigenous people that we're kind of glossed over. Um, we're looked at as the same person. Um, this evening, someone said, I already spoke to you about this, uh, when in fact, I know that was the first time I actually had spoken to that person. 
It shows that I'm not seen as an individual, and I see that time and time again. Uh, my younger daughter, Nishka, she had presented to you um, her own experiences, and I'm very proud of her. She came here today because of what she had witnessed and ex what her sister had experienced in the school system and in our community. My older daughter, Zoelle Kempenek, is a sophomore in the high school system. Um, and for a long time, she, she would recognize these issues uh, regarding Columbus Day and just the mistreatment for her being an interracial child. Um, when she would present these issues, I had told her she needs to really, truly be empowered and feel comfortable and advocating for her own education. Um, thankfully and luckily, my younger daughter, Nishka, all, was listening to this conversation and by first grade she was advocating for her education. Um, it has been a really beautiful experience but I want this for other children. Not everyone feels empowered um, to do so and so they use their, their own privileges and um, cor correcting something that impacts them and uh, again it impacts the entire community. Um, I believe that our community is at a crossroads right now as we are becoming more globalized and it is making its mark here in the area. It's important while we are integrating into this moder modernization that we also recognize, honor, and celebrate the plethora of diversity here in Grand Forks. And one of those ways to, to do that is to create the Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, Making this decision to support this is one of the, one of several steps that we can step in creating that welcoming environment. As a descendant of people who have once inhabited this land prior to settlers, it's personally important for my family. As a longtime member of this community, I feel that it is important to see this form of community growth as it embraces its history, recognizing indigenous people that are still here today, making a positive impact in our communities. Um, I can go on more and more, but I'm going to stop here before I start rambling. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. Please feel free to reach out to me via email or by phone. I'd love to visit more with you, um, but I hope that we expedite um, this decision. Thank you. Hello, I'm Aaron Kempenek, <clears throat> my lovely wife and daughter to speak to. I am not going to, of course, differ from that, but to add further support of abolishing, not changing, abolishing the Columbus holiday for the academic peer-reviewed facts. Uh, as my wife and my daughter and my sister-in-law did speak, there's a hurt deep down as emotional in addition to factual, in addition to that, which is greatest to me to those that may not play much weight on that, are the facts that the agreed upon translation of Columbus's Italian day-by-day -day journals are agreed on and show that he was a pedophile. He adored, he molested, he was a human trafficker for the children, nine to 11 girls. He would take his best friend, would rape them, and he wrote that to Her Highness Queen of Spain, in fact, the journal says that. There's places where, you know, exactly he says, he took women on shore and he, along and seized with other women, seven of them, from the islands of Juana or Cuba. And they would take the women and they'd utilize them and kill them and bring back to England. He was a slave trader. As a member of Grand Forks, I would hope that the city council would support putting a good image in Grand Forks, helping them lead the way that we do not support people who are human traffickers or pedophiles or people put people in slave or abuse others. I would like to get your support in helping change this, not change this, abolish it because it's not worth celebrating. And if there's any questions or facts needed, I have right here 220 pages of his journals that put in explicit detail the sick things he did with his people. And it's, it's, it's sickening that we celebrate that. I, I can't believe I wasn't educated enough to realize that there's such a romanticism about that, which is good, and everyone wants to be the best they can be, but facts has to come first before romance. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hello, members of City Council. My name is Becca Kruger. I'm a resident of Grand Forks in Ward 4. Uh, thank you for hearing us today. They say that history is written by the victors, and that's exactly why we have a day on our calendar celebrating a man who systematically worked to disenfranchise the indigenous peoples of this nation. Today, we all stand before you, and we ask that you move this resolution forward. We are not asking you to rewrite history. We are asking you to recognize it. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, council members, my name is Nikki Bird Buren. I live at 216 Fenton Avenue. Uh, I will be brief because I think a lot of us in this room share the same sentiments. The proper place for Christopher Columbus is in our classrooms, not on a public pedestal of honor. Uh, it is the job, uh, you know, as a historian, I can testify to the importance of studying this man and his legacy. And it is the responsibility of teachers to do just that, to unpack his complexity, to unpack the incredible complexity of the history he, he um, symbolizes. It's our job as teachers to help our students come to their own decisions about this, to come to their own critical analysis of this man and that history. But to continue dedicating a day of public celebration to this individual is to honor, uh, well, it, first of all, it's to erase or ignore, to whitewash or even celebrate genocide and the colonization of the indigenous peoples of Americas. And that's just, frankly, unacceptable for us to do uh, in the modern age. We know better than that. So I encourage the council to adopt Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, doing so certainly will not fix centuries of wrongdoing and atrocities, but it is a start. It will send, as others have said, an important message about Grand Forks being an inclusive place that celebrates diversity. And I think, even more importantly, it will bring much needed focus to the rich and vibrant cultures of Indigenous peoples in our community. I mean, we are standing on indigenous land right now. This culture is part of us. That is something for, that deserves public recognition. That is something that deserves public celebration. So I encourage you to accept the resolution. Thank you. Hello, Jackie Hoffworth, 727 North 20th Street here in Grand Forks. Um, I didn't really plan on talking today, but <clears throat> as I was sitting here, I was reminded of when I actually ran for the local office, and I sat up there for an open forum next to a man who was known to have connections with the KKK, and that man received 1,000 votes in this city. And what some people may not feel comfortable saying is that we do have an issue with acceptance in Grand Forks. I believe that. I don't believe it's most people, but I believe even a small bit can really ruin how safe and comfortable people feel in this city. And if you don't feel unsafe or uncomfortable, it's because you're not a target of that piece. Um, and so I think what maybe hasn't been said yet today is that this could be a small thing that symbolizes that here on Grand Forks we do not accept those types of things to happen in our city and will make people more comfortable and more safe, hopefully, in time. That's all. Hi there, my name is Laura Slothog and I live at 1766 South 34th Street, Grand Forks, North Dakota. Um, I, speaking from the present matter about Indigenous Peoples Day, I believe in passing this resolution because I believe we should celebrate the present and not the past. Um, we have a day of Columbus Day where it celebrates one man, but I believe in celebrating the present and celebrating the cultures and the people here in this room. I think that is more important than thinking about the past and our history because as we stand here, as people have mentioned today, we are writing history. So I think it's very important to recognize what we can do here today um, and also to recognize that you know, when we talk about indigenous people, we are standing in what was formerly known as Dakota Territory. So I think we should recognize what's important to us as North Dakotans. You know, we call ourselves that, but there's literally a Dakota tribe. Um, 
And I think we should also recognize the impact that the cultural events have here in Grand Forks, such as the Wichipi Time Water Timeout Powwow, which brings revenue through tourism and expands our city's cultural impact. So I just ask that you please vote yes on this resolution and recognize Native people's impact upon our community. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Eric Buren. I live at 216 Fenton Avenue here in Grand Forks. Uh, and like Dr. Berg Buren, I am a historian. Uh, you can imagine our poor children, uh, what they have to endure on a daily basis. Um, so uh, I teach about Columbus every semester. I've done so for many decades. Uh, and you know, Columbus actually made four uh, voyages to the Americas, uh, each more militaristic and certainly from our 21st century perspective, uh, horrific. Um, one of the common arguments one could make is that, well, you know, what we find morally uh, horrific uh, is different than what they thought, you know, back in, in the 1400s or 1500s. Uh, but there were people at the time who expressed deep reservations and misgivings about what, what was happening in the Americas. Uh, most famously, Bartol Bartolome de las Casas uh, wrote about the destruction of the Indies and, again, expressed sentiments that what was transpiring in the Americas was uh, deeply problematic. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest is that, you know, again, Columbus made four voyages to the Americas. None of them hey, did he ever set foot on what became the United States. Uh, so we only have two holidays in America named after specific people, uh, MLK Day uh, and Columbus Day, and I suppose if you want to stretch it, Christmas. Uh, but if we're going to be... If we're going to be you know, making America great, the least we could do is have holidays named after individuals who actually set foot in the United States, or what became the United States. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Ann Sandy. I live at 2299 Bethesda Circle, which I'm sure you don't know exactly where it is, but it's down across from Valley 4000. Um, I was born on Columbus Day. Um, and I grew up in Rhode Island. R Columbus was very important in Rhode Island, uh, there were many, many Italians there, and they all supported Columbus Day. Um, the uh, there was a big deal um, Columbus Day road race. Boys only, of course, um, but uh, the it was very important and it was a big deal. Um, I would like to suggest that um, since I have been sitting, uh, have sat where you are now sitting, I was a member of the council and um, chairman of the uh, Public Safety Committee back in the day, um, a long time ago. Um, I would like to suggest that in spite of everything, I think it's time to do the job. I strongly urge you to change the name. My name is Hassan Abdi. Uh, I live at uh, 2807 17th Avenue South. 
I see some of you sitting in the wrong spot. I don't know. I don't know your faces, but I see some of you sitting in some other spot you're not supposed to sit. Or I don't know if this is just okay with you guys. This is my first night. I want to know everybody if you're sitting in the right spot. I know cel uh, celebrated uh, Columbus Day, but cities, uh, the city of Columbus is working on uh, uh, well making uh, you know this town to be welcoming community or welcoming city. I urge everybody to leave you know Columbus Day alone and just make something uh, whatever you want to call it, First People Day or Indigenous Day, whatever you want to call it, for the uh, Indigenous community of this town. You know, we can have, you know, healthy community. You know, I heard a lot of people talking on the radio today, so mad and so anger. They started talking about, I don't know, how, the morning till 6 or 7. Uh, I'm not, I just could stop and could listen in about 5. So those people are in, live in this town. Some of them maybe is here today. So to make everybody a little bit happy, let's make... Uh, you know, new day for the indigenous community in our town and leave the Columbus Day alone. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? Okay. Hi there. My name is Sarah Galbraith. We've already gone over the history. In 1937, that's when we had this holiday brought forth. and. North Dakota became a state in 1889. Another fun fact, it took until 2018 for the first indigenous woman to be elected to our legislature here in North Dakota. You might say that I am a little involved in our community. I moved here in 98 for college at UND, and I have seen a climate change in Grand Forks especially. I have seen the fact that there are, there's more inclusivity, there is more activism, and there's more freedom to do so. The very fact that we are standing here right now having this conversation shows you just exactly how much this means to so many because it's, they saved our lives during those times and they have taught us well in all of the hard times that we've had in North Dakota. To support this would take the children that are in school right now and show them that we are inclusive. There are many times Grand Forks has not seen an inclusive community, and I think this is the first step toward it, and a wonderful step. This last midterm election, our district and our area went blue in a red state. I think that says also a lot in the fact that we are capable of doing this and we are capable of finding support. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Happy Watch Daily, which translates to Beautiful Night Woman, and my English name is Nalena Gray Eyes. Um, I'm 18 years old and I just graduated from Red River High School. And I'm going to start off with a little story that someone told me when they were in school, in high school. They were in a class and it was Columbus Day, and they were going over the history, and they were going on and on about how great he was. but my cousin started bringing up everything he did and like you heard it all the history and as soon as he brought that up he got in trouble and he got sent to the office and he got suspended so that's kind of messed up but anyway um and i remember in spanish class one year i had to sit there and listen and watch videos about how great he was and how much he did for this country and to know like everything that he has done and just sit there and learn about that it just wasn't fun and to know that no one else knows i have friends that literally have no idea how much native americans have like died they didn't know it was worse than the holocaust and for them to not know that and this go over the indigenous people is kind of sad yeah Can I speak without a comp speaker card? Yep. 
So I wasn't going to speak. So Kelly Gores, uh, 116 Conklin Avenue, 58203. Um, I wasn't going to speak today, but thanks to Councilperson Duckler's amazing history lesson, it turned out I do have something to say because my grandparents were those at early 1900 Italian immigrants um, from uh, from Italy. So I am an East Coast. My mother is East Coast Italian. Um, we don't need Columbus Day, us Italian immigrants. We don't need Columbus Day to honor us. We don't need it drop it, affirmatively um, adopt indigenous peoples before that day. Um, we are much happier being remembered for cannolis and coffee cake and coffee in the evening um, <laughs> than we don't need Columbus Day. So, would This is a really, really important issue. And I want to thank all of you who came tonight, whether you spoke or spoke with your hearts. And we, it, it takes a lot of courage to be able to do that. It takes a lot of integrity to be able to do that. Um, and your stories are heartbreaking. It is time, it's past time for us to make this change. So I would move that we approve as, um, as recommended, <coughs> as written. I'm sorry. Um, there's a motion. Is there a second? I'm second. Okay. Um, further discussion? Mr. Weddle? Thank you, Councilwoman Mock. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight um, to have a conversation regarding a resolution to abolish Columbus Day and instead replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. I want to be very clear, I support the addition of Indigenous People State to the City of Grand Forks. However, when I look at the resolution, I would like to point out some additional items. While I admit that my knowledge of Columbus Day was very poor, I decided to do some research. As we know, and other people have said, when Columbus Day was founded in 1937, the federal holiday provided a sense of dignity and self-worth in light of the hostility and discrimination to many Italian immigrants and Italian Americans. Less than five decades before the holiday was established, 11 Italians were lynched in New Orleans, the biggest mass lynching in US history. The National Italian American Foundation stated the following, in lieu of the advent of Indigenous Peoples Day, the NIAF is not opposed to the establishment of such a holiday. Native Americans like Italian Americans should have the right to celebrate and educate others about their history and culture. We believe that to repeal Columbus Day as a holiday, which is celebrated by over 20 million Italian Americans, only to replace it by another holiday celebrated by another ethnic group would be culturally insensitive. As we have said multiple times as a city, we strive to be welcoming to all backgrounds. I would offer that we create an Indigenous Peoples Day and that we also find a way to celebrate our Italian American population, possibly even at the same time. I will be voting in favor of this resolution as I'd like the opportunity to discuss it further over the next week or so before the next council meeting. And I'd also like the opportunity to weigh, on, weigh in on and ask some questions on the writing of the resolution of Ms. Dockler. Thank you, Councilwoman Mock. I would like to vote, I guess, on our initial motion that was put forward, and then pending that, I would have a mark. Okay, um, do we have audio for Mr. Bean and Mr. Weber? Uh, we don't have audio for Mr. Bean and Mr. Weber. They are working on it, though. Um, <coughs> so, I'd like to postpone just a minute to see if we can get them so that they can be in on the discussion as well. Um, I think we've had a lot of compelling testimony. We've got a lot of people that showed up tonight, they came to council chambers to share their thoughts. Um, certainly, I'm, I'm sure this isn't 100% unanimous across the city. I'm sure that there are some folks that do have some differing opinions, but we've heard from a lot of people tonight. We've heard a lot of support for this change. Um, I, 
think we've covered a lot of history and we certainly want to be open to everyone's viewpoints. We want to make sure everyone feels safe to share those viewpoints. Um, in general, however, it does seem like there's quite a showing of support for this item. I think we're still working yeah. on the audio. Uh, Madam Chair, um, Mr. Haig is trying to get him on the phone at, uh, under a plan B and then, then we can uh, see if they have any comments and then go to a vote. Thank you. I think when in doubt, we have four members in front of us too. So when in yes. doubt, I would just move forward with a vote. And I think the other members are planning to be here next Monday uh, for whatever additional discussion that we may need. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weber, we've got you on the phone up to the microphone. Very good. Thank you. We think. Uh, Mr. Weber, my, my, apologize, my, my apologies for being absent on this important evening, but uh, here, here we go. Columbus was not an American. He did not land in the U.S. or even North America. He did not discover what is currently referred to as the Americas. There's no legitimate reason to have a national holiday on his behalf. I value my friends and neighbors more than the inflated mythological memory of Columbus and a holiday that whitewashes crimes against humanity. There's a simple way of thinking about this evening's resolution. We can continue to offend friends and insult neighbors for no good reason. We can hold on to a mistaken, romanticized lie, or we can do the right thing and move toward a more historically accurate, inclusive, and socially just community. Thanks. I, I did speak with Mr. Vian earlier today. If he's not, so I'll, I'll speak for him. I think he was going to, he was interested in the conversation and hearing folks out, and it would give him some time to, to think about it um, over the week while he's uh, in Bismarck, and then would be uh, more than welcome to provide his thoughts on Monday. So that was kind of his thinking of he was going to listen tonight and then uh, in re engage on uh, at the city council meeting. Thank you. Um, well, I'm Okay, I think we have a sense of where everyone stands. Um, if we want to vote on it, we know that it comes back on Monday for any further discussion um, for Mr. Sandy to weigh in and Mr. Reen. So this would be a recommendation. Uh, Mr. Hagen, does Mr. Weber want to vote by phone? Okay. Um, seeing that, I would say all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Weber is an aye. No proxies. No proxies. We got to push up to the microphone, Mr. Weber. You're on the microphone again, Mr. Weber. That's true. And the vote. Was he in the affirmative? It's a call for the vote, Mr. Weber. Aye. All opposed. <laughs> <laughs> for those members that we have audio on, we are unanimous in moving this forward. It will come to council then next Monday. Um, thank you. So. Good evening. <clears throat> um, so, so this project involves replacement of several 
T fittings on a city's one of the city's main force main that transmits. Okay. All right. So this project involves replacement of several T's that are on uh, one of the city's main uh, force main that transmit sewage from the city out to the wastewater treatment plant. These uh, T's have. Uh, some of the T's have previously failed, uh, requiring uh, repair under emergency situations. So that's the reason that we're replacing them. Um, we received bids for this project uh, last Monday, July 1st. We received a total of three bids, and all three were open. And the lowest bid was from uh, company CC Steel in the amount of $497,500. That low bid was approximately 3% below the engineer's estimate. and. Um, this bidder, <clears throat> the low bidder, has previously done work for the city of Grand Forks, but not necessarily this type of work. Our, our consultant, Webster Foster and Weston, did some research on this, uh, this bidder and has found that uh, after interviewing uh, uh, other communities where he's done work, that he's likely able to, to do the, the work of this project. Uh, on that basis, we recommend uh, awarding the contract to low bidder CC Steel in the amount of $497,500. Thank you. Um, Opportunity Park, this is that area generally described as being west of the interstate, south of 32nd Avenue South. We've done a number of projects out there. This is uh, to do the paving, and the geometric extent of it is, is, in your, is in your packet. It's basically 42nd Street and parts of 36th Avenue South, uh, again, on that side. Uh, we did open open bids. The low bidder is uh, Paris Contracting. They're 6% below the engineer's estimate. And we're recommending award to Paris Contracting the amount of $1,130, $14.21. $114.21. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Item 216, amendment number one to engineering services agreement with AHS for project number 7436 slash 7437, district number 518 323, sanitary sewer and water main for North 62nd Street and Gateway Drive. Um, I don't know if we have Mr. Weber on the phone. We don't. So I will preface by saying, since this is a preliminary vote, um, I'll take action and then recuse myself at next Monday, since this is just for further recommendation. Mr. Walker. So this project in, in, includes installing uh, sanitary sewer and water mains in an area uh, that would serve existing developments as well as serve uh, future developments. It's in an area that was previously identified as a strategic, strategic infrastructure growth area. Uh, this project was actually bid in uh, 2017, and with the exception of uh, some surface restoration, it, it, was, it was recently completed uh, this year. <clears throat> um, the portion of the, of the project in, includes installing a very deep sanitary sewer. Uh, the sewer was about 28 feet deep, and the area is, uh, has very wet, very soft soil, so we, we encountered some very poor soils. The, uh, the, uh, the new sewer also paralleled uh, two sewer force mains, or I should say two force mains. One was the main wastewater uh, force main that carries sewage out to the wastewater treatment plant, and the other one is a, 
is a residuals force main that takes uh, waste from the water treatment plant out to a treatment facility. So it was very important that we not disrupt those two force mains. Um, the other thing that we encountered is, is that there were several businesses out in that area, so we needed to maintain access to, uh, to those businesses. Um, there was also a number of uh, private utilities. So there was a number of uh, issues out there that made this project very difficult. Um, the intent of the project was to do a kind of a different installation of a sanitary sewer that we don't typically do, but it was uh, such that we uh, had the contractor uh, excavate uh, pits uh, and then push in a steel casing pipe that for about a couple hundred feet uh, and then install manholes at that, those locations and then install a gravity sewer inside of the steel casing pipe. <coughs> the contractor was able, <coughs> excuse me, the contractor was able to complete that installation for a portion of the project, but when he came to the uh, Highway 2 crossing, he encountered a number of difficulties. Uh, the, uh, the pits that he had dug experienced uh, uh, side slope failures where the, where the sides caved in. Uh, the, a lot of his shoring uh, was uh, damaged, uh, was collapsed, and uh, the, the biggest problem he had is, is that the bottom of the excavation actually pushed up with the weight of the soil uh, around it and no excavation above it. So he, he encountered a number of difficult uh, uh, situations. So there was a point in time where the contractor actually demobilized from the site because he felt he just could not complete the installation the, the way it, it had been designed. So we negotiated a change order with this contractor to do it a different way and actually gave him uh, almost a, an additional year's worth of time to complete the project. The intent of this amendment is to uh, compensate the design engineer for additional effort on the project. One of the things that we had to do is, is we had to redesign the crossing of Highway 2. Originally, it was intended to be a steel casing pipe that would be pushed underneath the roadway. We changed it so that the contractor would install a, a smaller diameter polyethylene pipe by directional drilling it at a shallower uh, depth and a steeper slope. Uh, so the engineer had to redesign that. We also redesigned some of the upstream uh, uh, sewer because of the decreased in depth, we could install it by open cut as opposed to installing steel casing pipe as originally intended. Uh, the most significant uh, amount of effort required by the engineer was the additional inspection time. As I had mentioned before, we added an additional year of time to allow the contractor to complete the project, and the, the engineer was obligated to uh, inspect the project uh, for that duration. Um, there was another issue with a, uh, with, with a sewer that was installed along 12th Avenue. Uh, originally, it was thought that 12th Avenue existed, but however, we found out that 12th Avenue, their actual right-of-way had been previously vacated, so it was required that we obtain an easement for that, that installation. The, uh, the other thing we ran into is, is that um, because with all of the soil problems that we had out there, the consultant was asked to have his geotechnical uh, subconsultant uh, evaluate some of the soil conditions, uh, do some additional testing, some evaluations, and make some recommendations regarding how to handle the soil out in that area and not repeat some of the problems that, that we encountered. The last thing that uh, we ended up doing is is that we had to work with rural water and the contractor to relocate a section of rural water that was originally thought to be uh, a ways away from the from the uh, sewer uh, installation however we found that it was uh, in conflict with the, the proposed uh, installation so the, the um, the consultant ran into a number of difficulties, and the purpose of this amendment is to compensate him for that additional time that was not anticipated when the original agreement was, was approved. On that basis, we recommend approval of amendment number one with AE2S for additional engineering services in the amount of $93,000. Uh, 
item 217, preliminary engineering reimbursement agreement for project number 8048, reconstruction of North 3rd Street, University of Tuberous. Mr. Walker again. So uh, this project involves reconstruction of that section of, of, of street, North 3rd Street from University Avenue to Demers, and would utilize uh, nearly $2.5 million of federal funds through the Urban Grants Program. And normally, um, federal funds would normally not be allowed for use on preliminary engineering and design engineering. Typically, that's something that the city is obligated to fund themselves with 100% city funding. However, under this new federal program, uh, preliminary design engineering and final design engineering is eligible. However, uh, the DOT requires that the city enter into an agreement that basically says that if the city decides to materially change the scope of the work of the project or cancel the project, we would reimburse them for uh, the monies, the federal monies that have been spent on the project. So uh, we, we think that that's, uh, that's appropriate. Uh, with that, we would recommend appro approval of the preliminary engineering reimbursement agreement with the North Dakota Department of Transportation. Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other <coughs> business? Any other announcements, Mr. Thielen? I just wanted to highlight next, uh, in case you don't have any calendars, we're get, we have a city council meeting, as we've emphasized tonight on the 15th, so we'll have the resolution moving forward. You will have uh, peer development. We'll come back with the, uh, the amended TIF. Uh, for the additional floor and the additional apartments as we've discussed. It has been approved by both the uh, school board and the county commission and that'll be up in front of you for uh, final resolution. I also wanted to mention we also will be briefing um, the first budget meeting will be on the salary and benefit plan will be in front of you and Tangi Bovet from HR will brief that and then on we'll discuss the general fund and Marine Storstead will brief that on the 15th and then on the following Monday on the 22nd, we'll brief uh, the enterprise funds and some of the other miscellaneous funds. Just so you know, we're getting into budget season and so Monday will probably be a more lengthy meeting, um, but uh, we'll, we'll give you a good overview and we'll have plenty of time to follow up with any questions on the budget between uh, you know the, the 15th and 22nd when it comes back in, in August. So I just wanna give you a heads up that 15th and the 22nd will be more robust meetings. Thank you. Otherwise, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved and seconded. Thank you. <coughs>
On Saturday, August 17th, feel the thrill of WWE Live with the Universal Champion. The age of Rollins is here! And we are going to burn it down! See Seth Rollins collide with Baron Corbin for the Universal Championship, plus Braun Strowman battles Bobby Lashley one-on-one. -on -one. It's WWE Live at Grand Forks on Saturday, August 17th. Tickets are available.